guys, it's Katie. Um, today I have a video for you for a fantasy map making tutorial. If you've been in the art room before, you may know what this tutorial is. I've been on kind of this kick of making these maps because I think they're super fun and really easy kind of project to do that actually ends up with a really, really cool and fulfilling result. Um, for this project, what you will need is a pencil, a piece of paper, um, optionals, ugh, what? Optionals <laughs> for this project are uh, any type of coloring implement, crayons, markers, colored pencils, gel pens is what I end up using, um, a pen or a marker to ink your pencil outline, a ruler to help make your compass rose, and the non-optional and super important last ingredient to this map making tutorial that you need is a cup of dried beans. Yes, a cup of dried beans. Um, <laughs> it sounds crazy. If you've made it before, you know what I mean. Um, I've used split peas. I've used rice puff cereals. If you don't have like red kidney beans, which is what I use in this particular video, any type of bean, any type of thing, honestly, that's easy to pour out onto a piece of paper and will stay there. Um, I'm going to attempt with perler beads, probably. They might be a little bit too small, might be a little bit too circular. Um, but so long as they stay on the paper, it won't make a huge mess for you. It can be used. First, I pour my dried beans onto my paper. I'm using red kidney beans that I'm planning to make food with later this week. If you don't like the initial pour, you can restart and pour the beans back into the cup or just do what I did and grab a few more to fill out the drawing. It all depends on your preference. This time, adding more helps a lot, I think. Once you have a shape you like, grab a pencil and start tracing. This was the first time I used kidney beans and I found that they spun around a lot. It wasn't really a problem, but it did shift the design ever so slightly. You can always push them back or just let things happen. Um, you can use other beans as well. Anything dried and easy to pour back into the cup is preferable. You can even use beads. I got pearl beads in front of me that I might try with. It will change the shape, but overall you'll end up with a pretty cool design. After you trace the outside, look for gaps on the inside to make some legs. You could also do this a step later when adding other key sites, but I find doing it now at, with the gaps adds a more natural in shapes and sizes. Although, I do sometimes mistake these smaller lakes for trees later on. <laughs> After you've traced everything, it is time to pour the beans back into the cup. Gather in the middle of the paper, bend it, and slowly pour them back. None escaped into the table this time, but, you know, sometimes that happens. Once you have that out of the way, it is time for detail. I first fix up my lakes that were really light and unconnected. Some of them were fine and were completely scene and I can deal with that, so not all of them. Next, I decided to make the compass rows. On the map, this shows which directions things are, whether it be north, south, east, or west. Uh, I think it really brings this project from a drawing into actual map territory. All you need to do is to draw a cross shape and then an X through the middle, and adjust to how you like it. I tend to make the X smaller because it reminds me of the northern star, which is normally used for navigation. As you can see, uh, I had a hard time with this row, so I just erase and adjust it until I was happy with it. This eraser is a pen that I can like click, like a mechanical pencil, and um, is super nice for smaller detail. I will say that this poster paper did not like erasing, and you can see it left a lot of marks behind, um, but we're going to be inking over everything anyway, so it ends up not being too big of a deal. And, you know, art happens, and things will adjust as we like them. Adjusting. I made the bottom of this too small at this point, and then I had to draw it back, and I had to add back in to the top and the bottom, really going for that North Star look this time, I guess. I don't know. It was really fussy. Uh, once you are happy with the lines, you can add little flourishes to make it look finished. I went with an arrow motif and then added directions above the arrow tips, me leaving the arrow ends to be the inside X portion. Yeah. 
next step is to make your symbol key. I normally do mountains, hills, valleys, and trees. Make the symbols easy to draw so that way you can repeat them over and over again on the map. The simpler they are, the better, and the more you'll feel like putting onto your map. Now is my favorite part, making rivers. Rivers connect the oceans and lakes to either each other or to more inland areas of the map. So try to pick spots that the coast that are already pinched in. After, you can create smaller offshoots of the main river to spread the rivers out. I try to keep a balance on my map and make sure that there are rivers or lakes nearby most empty areas because that makes it easier for people to live there if there were water nearby. That's how normal civilizations work. Now start to add your symbols from the key earlier. Try to think about the natural way things would appear. Most mountains aren't alone, trees grow by water, that kind of stuff. When it comes to villages, I like to hide some away or put them by the coast since that's where most resources are. Even mountain towns can be explained this way because of mining. Think about what you talked about in history class or reference maps online to draw inspiration from. Well, uh, here is a hard cut. The first time I filmed this, my camera kept cutting out, so I had to do a 10 minute timer telling me when to restart recording. So it happens a couple times. Time for some trees. <laughs> trees will probably be the most created symbol, um, as trees don't normally stand alone and are in forests. Um, unless you're making some like post-apocalyptic world with no trees, then whatever, you do what you want to do. Personally, trees and forests are my favorite, besides rivers, of course. Not sure why. I think they just make things feel full when they're done on the map. This is another reason why I like rivers at the, be at the bean pouring stage. Blech. Trees should be around bodies of water so that way they could be fed. Um, and lakes are already in place so that way it makes it easy to put forests. You can also put by the rivers that you make as well, but you know, having an empty blank canvas is kind of weird. Ugh, more trees, more trees, more trees! Once a symbol I didn't put into my key is the one I use for the capital city. I make a small rectangular fort-like structure and then add pillars. I think they're pillars or they're whatever, like outposts from there. Um, and put a couple houses around and then boom, your major city is complete. Now that we have added everything, it is time to name our map. Hmm. I really struggle with this for some time for some reason. And normally I don't have that much of an issue. Uh, names normally come easy to me because I can use the shape of the land or different structures that I have on the insides and features or maybe a mythical land or creature that I'm already thinking of. Whatever you want can be your world, but nothing was really making sense. So I ended up having to ask my mom who was in the other room um, and showing her the map. And she is the one who came up with the name. So welcome all to the Misfit Island. Makes perfect sense. I'm a big old misfit and uh, yeah, I like to have my own island. Now it's time to ink. I use a two-sided Sharpie so that I could use the fine tipped end for the details and then trace the outline with the darker side. You can use a pen or a marker to mimic this look if you don't have a fine tip sharpie or you can ink it whichever way you want. Everything from here on out is style preference. I prefer bolder lines and color on my map because I normally use watercolor after doing the pencil. Uh, this time around I went with a gel pen so that my for my coloring and did patterns to cover areas. One of my favorite outline designs is this pattern of three small lines going vertical and then three small lines going horizontal all the way around the outer edge of a map. Um, it gives everything this very old school kind of feel because it, it also looks like it's handmade, which it obviously is, you did that. Um, it does take a lot of time to do and patience, so I wanted to kind of make this video easier to watch and 
not sit watching a full minute at double speed me inking the outside so I didn't do that one um, but it's whatever you want to do in the end the way that this map ends up looking in its finishings is all your design uh, to steal a phrase from one of the artists that I follow on YouTube and have taken classes from just follow your art heart and see what you like just remember that pens and markers and pen colored pencils in particular um, are a bit more permanent than a regular pencil that you can erase so any mistakes at this point um, it's easier to just embrace and to go with the flow there's actually an example of this later on in the video see this is what I mean when I'm saying like I sometimes forget that my lakes are uh, not trees if you look at the top of the map at this point you can see that those light lakes the why they were kept light in my opinion is because my trees are a little bit darker but that could be one whole tree area thankfully i didn't mistake them as trees this time um and was able to keep all of my lakes lakes and all of my trees trees Just keep inking, just keep inking, just keep inking, inking, inking. It's a very tedious process, this part, uh, making sure everything's covered. But, you know, oh, we're doing a hard cut again. <laughs> uh, it is definitely necessary because it ends up making things feel finished. All right, it is now time to get to the outer border. Um, as you're tracing the outline, uh, look out for any of the details on the inside that you may have missed inking over. I had a couple in the end popping up. Um, it's not too big of a deal, but in theory, you should be able to erase everything after this step. So anything that is only pencil will go away. So making sure you cover everything is super important. Um, I didn't have a big eraser for this project. For some reason, it wasn't in my pencil bag that I was using. So I ended up skipping this step, um, but it still makes a more complete, consistent feel if everything is covered in marker since I decided to cover everything in marker. Almost done. This already looks like super complete. See, I didn't get those mountains, ah! And the lake. Come on, find it. Good job. <laughs> now it's time to ink your words. Um, sometimes I erase this and then do a really stylized font that fits the aesthetic of the map, but my regular handwriting seems to fit it pretty well. Over the compass rose. Now here's where a mistake I made came, comes in. Um, I kind of wanted to make the inner lines a little bit thinner, but I didn't like just the one stroke over the fine tip and it just didn't end up working out. So I ended up going back to the thicker end and just making the whole compass rose one thickness. Um, it doesn't look bad, but it wasn't initially what I was going for. Um, now it's time to color. I started with black because I thought of using only one pen and then changing my shapes, but I ended up changing my mind instead. Uh, because that many different patterns on this style of a map um, was going to be really busy and just not look good in the end. So I quickly decided to just do different colors. I did kind of a cross-stitching look on the villages in any of the buildings that I was using black. Then I used a diag gel pen for my water. I started with the lakes and then later on we'll be doing the same exact design onto the full rest of the map that is the ocean um, in much, much broader strokes than what I'm doing with the lakes right now. Now it's time to move on to the green for the trees. Um, at first I tried to go with the opposite diagonal that I did with the water, uh, but the trees were so small that you couldn't really tell. So um, it's just coloring being the better option here instead of doing the patterns again. It was at this stage I kind of noticed that I forgot to do the village and the lake that were by this particular forest, so I just grabbed the pens again. Thankfully everything was just to the side of my recording area and I just 
filled them in, and then went back to the next section of trees. Um, that's the fun part about this project, is that it's always easy to just add things in if you're like, eh, I'm missing something here, or I missed this completely in coloring, and you can color it back. So this time I started to realize that I was neglecting the islands that I had made on the outside. They really do complete the look, but none of the islands had anything on them. So I decided to add a little volcano on this upper island and put some mountains around it. Later I'm going to color it a bit orange. Um, and then I realized I also didn't ink the key, so it was time to ink the key finally. A little bit of orange for that volcano. And now it's time for the blue, because it's ocean time! I just made a bunch of series of lines over and over, trying to keep them connected. You'll see in a second, uh, I get really distracted. <laughs> My sister um, was home and she walked in at this point and was asking me what I was doing, so she kind of distracted me. Her head popped in for a second there. All right, back to the coloring. When doing these bigger swatches of the paper, I didn't really worry about making sure all the lines were connected. Adding some smaller lines, um, and it's not really noticeable, especially over the islands and the different areas. Just making sure your variation doesn't just happen on one side and trying to balance it out. So long as every line is going the same way, it ends up looking. Just add some lines back in when I realized that I was going wider and smaller, lower down. That way everything was a bit even and it felt like it was one cohesive piece. Making sure your lines can go back and forth too, I think is super helpful, honestly. Um, just doing one super straight line, although if that's your style, you can do it. I felt this went well. Oh, that was a weird video glitch. Um, this happens a few more times, but it's an issue with the way the video rendered and due to the fact that we're actually coming towards the end of the video and the fact that I didn't want to have to do this project over again if it was a recording issue, I just decided we're gonna have to deal with it. Sorry, hopefully the next video, if I make another video, doesn't end up that way. Um, at this point, I was trying to figure out what color I wanted to do the landmass as a whole, since it was the last thing I needed to color. I ended up choosing this orange color instead of like a darker green I was literally looking for. I ended up not having one, um, but this orange actually ended up being super helpful for this project because blue and orange are contrasting or complementary colors that can be used interchangeably, which basically means they're on the opposite side of the color wheel. So when you make them oppose each other, they end up actually making uh, each other pop out and it ends up looking really good. I decided to go with vertical lines for the landmass itself to kind of complement this idea of complementary colors and clash the diagonal with the vertical, but then at this point I kind of regretted it because I realized that there was a huge area of land that I would now have to make vertical lines for over and over. Like that was just a huge stretch of land to make a vertical line for. Um, and I, for some reason, don't like making vertical lines. I don't know, they feel like they need to be super straight and they just weren't going to be um, because that just wasn't possible. So what I ended up doing in the similar fashion to the diagonal line, reached a landmass, I kind of broke up the lines, made sure that they weren't super straight, did it over multiple times so that way it looked intentional in that way. Um, and then I discovered at about this point, oh yeah, I can just have it horizontal lines I can draw or slightly diagonal, which I seem to prefer for some reason. So. <laughs> weird, weird things that you learn when drawing. You can move the paper around. <laughs> mm. 
This part can be a little bit time consuming, but I do recommend being this thorough with your project. Um, it ends up keeping things consistent throughout. It's what makes a project feel final for me, is if I'm doing a pattern to make sure I do it completely. Um, getting close to the end here, we have so little land to do, and then those two little islands. Ugh, oh, project is almost done. Get that remote little peninsula island place. My ink actually ran out right here. I was like so excited to be done, and then like you watch, so I decided to flip pressure closer would work and it actually ended up did uh, helping out but that one line is much darker than the rest of the lines around it but I didn't really care too much. You might also see that I went through one of the maps completely with the vertical lines. And just like that our map is complete. Here it is on a horizontal angle. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. And that's it. That's how you make a fantasy map. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know there was a couple audio and uh, visual issues. The visual ones I knew about when I was recording the audio. And then I got my audio and things were weird. That's what happens when you use free editing software, I guess. Um, so hopefully things weren't too crazy and off-putting. Um, and that you enjoyed... Uh, the project. So I will see you in a follow-up video at some point in the next few weeks. And if I don't see you then, then I'll definitely see you when the club opens back up. I miss you all who are my members and to those of you who are not, who somehow happened upon this video or are watching because uh, you went to the BGCV website. Thank you for participating. Um, you are also always allowed into my art room. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Please stay safe and make sure to wash your hands and do your homework if you haven't.